Hello everybody and welcome to another video on family from our YouTube channel. So today I'm gonna make tea again, I'm gonna do uh, one batch of the, the kill green. We have some nice gushu. We have actually exactly 9 kilograms of gushu in this basket. I'm gonna fry them, I'm, I'm gonna fry those leaves and while I'm frying the leaves I'm gonna talk a little bit about physics and about the heat transfers that occur during that cooking. I have started this fire for about uh, half an hour now so a lot of ember has already built up which means that uh, we'll get a, a good diffuse heat. So if I check with my uh, thermometer now at the center of the wok we're at 350 degrees Celsius. So all the temperatures I mention in these videos are in degrees Celsius. Just remember that water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and it boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. Let's go for the first batch. Let me just check the time. It's now 10.45, so we're ready to go. So now you can, you can hear that crackling and that's because my wok is hot and little bubbles of water just uh, pop on the wok. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, how we generate the heat. So here our, our wok is, um, uh, is heated by wood fire. Okay, so I've weighted the wood, I've put about 7 kilograms of wood in my, um, well, in my combustion chamber, you could call it. Maybe half of it has already burned. Now, uh, I'm not going to do very accurate measurements this time because um, it would be pretty hard like, to, to measure the weight of the, of the wood as it's burning. Seven kilograms of wood. What kind of energy do we get with seven kilograms of wood? On Wikipedia, I saw that one kilogram of wood gives you from 16 to 21 megajoule of energy. A joule is an energy unit. Energy is present in, in different forms. So it can be a mechanical work with one joule. You can lift uh, a 100 gram stuff one meter in the air, like you could think of a small apple that you can lift in, in the air by one meter or your guy one, that's about 100 gram. And that will um, require one joule of energy. It can be heat, so for example, um, at rest, an average human body consumes 100 joules per second. A, a light bulb, like if your light, light bulb is 40 watt, then it means it consumes 40 joules per second. So I have a reserve of energy in the form of wood, about 100 megajoules of energy that's available in the wood I put in. Now we're going to make that energy available, we're going to release that energy from the wood by burning it. So burning is simply an oxidation reaction. The carbon gets broken down, it uh, associates with oxygen, that releases carbon dioxide, CO2, and that also releases heat. Now, our heating medium, we're not going to barbecue the leaves. That could be nice, but I think it will be a bit too smoky for your taste. So we need to transfer, transfer that heat to another medium. And that medium is our iron wok. So this iron wok will get the energy from the flames from the burning wood. It gets its energy through convection and mainly uh, radiation and conduction through the, um, the flames heating, hitting the wok walls. And this wok will act as a, as a stock, as a temporary stock of energy. And how does the wok stores energy, well, through, 
by increasing its temperature, you could say that the temperature of an object is one of the ways in which it stores energy. The higher the temperature, the more energy it has in store. Now, we, we could estimate the amount of energy that's in our wok. Our wok weights 75 kilograms. But let's say we're not heating all of the wok. We're going to take an average temperature of 250 degrees Celsius and we're going to consider that our wok is only 45 kilo. We're going to consider we only heat up about this, which represents 45 kilo. And so our temperature is 20 degrees, our base temperature, and we're going to heat it up up to 250 degrees. And there's a formula that allows you to calculate the amount of energy that is stored. The formula is Q, the heat, the, the energy stored in joules, equals the mass of your object, so that will be 45 kilo, multiplied by the specific heat of the material your object is made of. So for iron, let me see, I wrote some notes here. It's 0 0.46 joules per gram per degree. So this, this S uh, is a constant and depends on the material. So for the for the iron, that will be 0 0.46 joules per gram per Celsius degree. So it means that if you want to heat up one gram of iron by one degree, you want its temperature to increase by one degree, you'll need to add 0 0.46 joules of energy. Okay, and my formula was, so Q equals, Q the heat equals the mass of the object multiplied by the specific heat of the, of the material multiplied by the difference in temperature. So in our case, that will be uh, 250, our measured average temperature, divided by 20, our basic ambient temperature, all in degrees Celsius, okay? Um, and I put some calculations here, let me check, like when we heat up our wok, yeah, we, we give it 4,760 kilojoules of energy, so half, about half a million joules, okay, that is, of energy that is stored in our wok at the beginning of the, the Kilburn process. Now, of course, this energy is not very well stored, it's a temporary storage because um, as the temperature increases my, my wok is going to radiate some energy and the higher the temperature increases the more energy it will radiate and actually there is a factor of 4 so it's, uh, I think it's too constant like the Boltzmann something constant multiplied by another constant, the, the emissivity constant, multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin, raised to the 4. So that means that, um, let's say if my, if my temperature doubles, then the radiative power will be multiplied by 16. And so, but it's in Kelvin. Okay, so it's not in, in degrees Celsius, it uses the same scale as the Celsius degree, but you, you take the temperature in Celsius, you, do minus, uh, you, you add 273 uh, degree to that, and that will give you the temperature in Kelvin. So zero Kelvin is the absolute zero, it means that nothing can be colder than this, at, at that stage the, the matter doesn't move at all. Okay, because uh, temperature is actually kinetic energy 
um, like the, the the atoms in your in your matter are moving. They are kind of excited by the heat, and so the the more excited they are, the higher their temperature. And when two atoms two, two atoms touch each other, touch each other, they they just bump into each other, and part of that the kinetic energy uh, of well of the hotter atom is transferred to the colder atom. This is why everything tends to um, move towards a stable temperature. Okay, so that the heat transfer goes from the higher temperature stuff to the lower one. Okay, why am I talking about every about all this? It's just to illustrate that, yeah, the work temperature, the work temperature is not as important as we think it is. We need to transfer energy to, like, invest energy into these fresh leaves. We, we, the energy will be spent in different ways, the energy that goes from the walk to the leaves. First, when I put my leaves, they are at an average at the ambient temperature, almost at ambient temperature, I will need to heat them up. So again, Q equals the mass of the object multiplied by S, the specific heat of the object, multiplied by the difference in temperature. Uh, here I, I checked some, I tried to, to find the, the specific heat for tea leaves and I didn't find it, but I, find it, I found it for uh, lettuce, which I will assume is about the same as tea because it, it really depends on the kind of the texture and structure of the material. And I found that it was like four, yeah, let me check this, four joules per gram per degree. So it's 10, it has a, the specific heat is 10 times more, 10 times higher than the specific heat for iron. Okay, so it means that, uh, well, basically, your tea leaves will need 10 times more energy uh, to heat up as much as uh, an equivalent mass of iron. And this is uh, quite easy to understand. This is because tea is mostly made of water or things that behave closely to water. So um, uh, water is 4.2, I think. Yeah, uh, water has a specific heat of 4.2. So to heat up your water by one degree Celsius, one gram of water, you need to invest 4.2 joules of energy. Uh, so this is significant. The, well, it's normal. That's why we use water to, to store up energy. And like when you're boiling your, your water in your kettle, actually you can calculate how much time it's going to take to boil just by, uh, well, you, you know, like the, the energy output of your kettle and you know, well, you know how much water you put in your kettle, you know the specific heat and you can work out the, the time it's going to take, like how much energy uh, the kettle needs to bring into the leaves to bring them uh, into the, the water to bring them to a boiling point. Okay, so first reason why we need energy is to heat up the leaves. But I'd say that's easy, you know, I've calculated that. Yeah, it's gonna take like 2400 uh, kilojoules, okay, just to, to heat up our batch of uh, Oh yeah, I, I did the calculation with 8 kilogram of leaves because that's the standard batches I use. Um, yeah, to heat them up to 95 degrees. Why 95 degrees? Because here um, we're at high altitude and the water boiling point is 95 degrees Celsius. Now, once we've heated the leaves up, we want to extract water out of them. Let me remind you, that's one of the main reasons why we do satching. Well, it's um, w one of the reasons is to get the tea drier. So we're going to evaporate water. And now we're in a totally different business. Actually, if you, 
if you add energy to something, you're not going to necessarily increase its temperature. Um, you can also uh, change its, uh, its chemical state. So, when water reaches, well, if you're at sea level, when water reaches 100 degrees Celsius, what's going to happen? It's not going to go to 101, it's going to start evaporating, boiling. And this requires a lot of energy. Okay, so what did I tell you? Four point, the specific heat to, to raise by one degree is 4.2 joules. Now get ready. If you want to evaporate one gram of water, you're going to need 2,200 joules just to evaporate, to have that, that gram of water going from a liquid state to a gaseous state. So to give you an idea, let's say you, you have your kettle, you start boiling one, one liter, you, you will boil one liter of, those, um, of the water in your kettle. How much is it going to take you? You want to go from 20 degree to 100 degree? Well, it's going to take you something like what? Uh, specific heat of water? Yeah, it's going to take you something like 4... Multiply, like you have to do 4. So it's going to take you 4.2... Uh, multiplied by 1000 gram, multiplied by 80, the, the difference between 20 degree and 100 degree. And so it's going to take you, I don't know, uh, something like 3600 uh, kilojoules. If you want to evaporate that water, it's going to take you 2300 kilojoules extra, okay? So that's like seven or eight times more and that makes sense okay when when your kettle has reached the boiling point you're far from having well it's going to take much more time to evaporate uh, that water that's why it's better to use to use it to brew tea you know and so during our shaching we are evaporating water uh, this is part of the thing we want okay we are evaporating water you have seen a lot of steam has been coming, coming off my wok. And that energy that you invest in the steam, in building up the steam, you can either keep it in your system, you can keep it inside your patch, your batch of leaves, or you can open it up and let it evaporate. Now I'm towards the end of my shaching session. You can see that my fire is now quite small. It's mainly ember that radi radiates heat towards the wok. So now I want to keep the steam inside and let it cook a little bit with the steam. If the steam doesn't escape, it means that I'm building up energy, okay? I am building up energy in my batch of leaves. And my wok is still heating it up, so it's adding energy. So I'm adding up energy in my batch of leaves, and that's what's cooking the tea. Let's say when the leaves touches the wok, you have conduction, the wok is very hot, the leaf is... Uh, at lower temperature, much lower temperature than the wok, so it's going to take in energy, and part of the and, and the water is going to evaporate because it, it brings in enough energy to allow it to evaporate. Then the water is going to travel upwards. This is called convection. Okay, so um, hotter fluids go higher; they climb up. So this is convection it works in air or in your kettle this is why you can see your water rotating when it's boiling or when it's heating up it's because of convection if I open up the batch I let the steam go 
But if I keep it inside, some of that steam will bump into leaves and might actually um, condensate on the leaves. And it's going to release a lot of the energy. Well, it's going to re-release that, uh, what we call that, that heat of vaporization, okay? that latent energy, that's called. So that uh, 2,000, 2,300 joules that one gram of steam has in it because you, you've like invested the energy in it to make it evaporate. When it condensates, it's going to release it. This is why if you put your hand over uh, a steam boiler, well, the steam doesn't feel hot, but you can easily burn yourself if you get too close to the steam and part of the steam condensates and that's that 2,300 joules per gram punching in your skin and burning you. This is why steam is great for heating things up and it's widely used in the industry. This is a great way to conserve energy. Okay, so two reasons we add heat well, to increase the temperature of our leaves, we add heat to bring water to a boil and to evaporate water. And now the last reason and the main reason why we add heat is to cook the leaves, to change their cell structure, to, change, to break some bonds inside the cells. And for this, it requires energy. That's the basics of cooking. You add in energy that's kind of just going into the food, going into uh, changing the structure of the cells. And for this, I couldn't find any information on the internet as to what kind of uh, energy requirement that would be. You know, to get the leaves from a, a fresh state, you know, from that kind of leaves to this kind. You can see that they're like their, their cells have kind of collapsed, they are much more flexible and um, and for example the enzymes are destroyed, of course uh, destroying the enzymes is only a, a detail as far as energy goes, it doesn't cost a lot but uh, it still requires like some energy, you have your your enzymes responsible for oxidation and you use that heat to break some bonds and kind of make those molecules collapse. And of course, well, depending on the structure of the molecule and how it's made, um, they will have more or less heat resistance. And so enzymes typically uh, degrade quite easily when under uh, high temperature. So I think that's enough shutting for now. Let me go on to the next batch and keep on discussing that. I'm just gonna release the steam that I have. Okay, so now I'm getting rid of the energy that's in the form of steam in my batch. I don't need it anymore. If the tea wasn't cooked enough, I could have chosen to keep, to keep that energy inside, to keep the steam inside and just uh, keep it in a basket and have it cook that way. Having it cook slowly uh, with the remaining steam that's inside the batch. But here my steams are well well done so there's no need for that and I'm gonna stop here because I don't want my leaves to get too dry <laughs>